it going? I hope everyone's well. Um, so I just wanted to make this video to sort of walk you through how we can use these lip sync options um, for your personal assignments. All right, so I've, I've sort of just taken the liberty of creating this file for you guys. I've set it up sort of as accurately and responsive as I can. So hopefully you won't have any errors. Uh, but yeah, so let's just kind of take a look at uh, our characters, right? So we've got option three. This is the one that we were using in class. Just move that out the way. Uh, option two, that is our sort of like oriental person, all right? So sort of like that, uh, that vibe over there. Um, and then we have our little whiskey dude. All right, um, they each have their own mouth shapes. All right, so when I double click on that, you'll see it takes me into a personal tab for option one mouth shapes. If I was in option two and I went into mouth shapes, I would be in option two mouth shapes. And finally, option three, option three mouth shapes. Okay, so these, those are the tabs at the very end here. I'm just gonna swap them around so that they're in the correct order for you guys. Um, and yeah, there we go. So there's a very cool little shortcut when it comes to working with um, compositions inside of compositions. All right. So if I go into option three mouth shapes, okay, if I hit the tab button, you'll see it brings up this sort of chain. Okay. It shows where the chain ends. So option three mouth shapes is the final composition in the composition chain. A little arrow pointing that it comes from option three. And option three does not exist in anything else, so that is our endpoint. Okay, so by hitting tab, selecting option three, it automatically then jumps me into where I need to be. All right, and that makes life a lot easier when it comes to just needing to get back to where we were. If we're working with multiple compositions, we can make sure that we're working correctly. Okay. Um, all right, for those of you who um, have like a lip bite for the, the lust or the sexy sort of vibe, I have tried to make one. Um, it's not the best. I'm really like not happy with it. But to be honest, the amount of effort that I put into it and the end result, I'm just kind of tired of fucking around with it at this point. Um, so we'll experiment if we can make anything sort of better, maybe with some time remapping. But for now, that's kind of there. So I've got lip bite options for, for each of the characters. Um, so I've got option one lip bite, I've got option two lip bite, and I have option three lip bite. Okay, now the cool thing about here is that these colors, these are actual paths inside of After Effects, all right? So if I go and change the colors of my mouth shapes in Illustrator, it's not going to affect this. That's why in our effect controls, I've gone ahead and generated a fill so that whatever color I want, I can change the color of the mouth shapes. Okay, so if you want to change the, the sort of like lip icon or the, the lip colors, then um, that is there for us. Okay, pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, so that's the lip path over there, lip path over there. And I can generate a fill and just drop it on top of that. So I can show you here, generating a fill, dropping it on the lip path. All right, so I just went into my effects and presets. I searched for fill. I have the generate fill option and by dumping it onto layer two, the lip path, I have now said, cool, uh, override the previous color, I want to see the, um, I want to be able to change that. All right, so I'm gonna undo that. Uh, let me just make sure I get that color so that I can change it back if necessary. But yeah, I'm gonna drop that fill on for you. All right, and then I'll set up the color for you as well. So now you'll be able to, in your effects here, change things as necessary. All right, so that's uh, option one lip bite, option three lip bite that already has a color set to it. All right, so again, I can change whatever color I want. Um, and that's kind of just there for if you want to change your characters around, change their colors, etc. All right. And obviously remember that if we open our assets inside of Illustrator, it will automatically then update for us, right? As long as we overwrite that Illustrator save file, After Effects is going to be like, okay, cool. Things have changed. Update. There we go. Okay. So I think I've explained kind of like the basics of the workspace. Um, just to give you an idea of the project panel, for those of you who maybe didn't see, very important that we keep the project panel very neat and tidy, all right? Um, when you generate solids, it will automatically create a folder for you. I created a, or it automatically creates a layers folder as well um, once we start importing layers. So these are the layers from all of the Illustrator files that we've imported. Uh, video footage, this is the sound file that I've been using. And then finally, compositions, this will also automatically be created for us. If we need more folders, we can click on our little folder icon over here. 
All right, but with a folder selected, if I continue to click, it's going to put folders within folders. All right, so just make sure that we don't make that mistake. Okay, cool. So let me walk you through um, how we go about animating our chicky over here. All right, so I've shown you here, this is what we're used to. Um, and the method that I go through first is kind of just hiding and only using our mouth shapes for now. That's all I want to, to use. So I'm going to go to option two mouth shapes and I'm going to remember we need to enable time remapping in order to make this composition work. Okay. So you'll see that this composition is shorter than the rest of our layers. All right. It ends over here. And that is because inside of the composition itself, that comp is a lot shorter than the previous ones. Okay, so going back into option two, how we are going to be using this is right clicking on that layer. All right, so I've right clicked on layer eight, option two mouth shapes. I'm going to go to time and I'm going to enable time remapping. Okay, and as soon as I do that, we get a couple of uh, sort of pieces of information that have changed. Uh, visually in our timeline, I can now extend this layer as far as necessary. All right, so I'm just gonna drag it all the way out so that it's beyond my end point. And this little keyframe represents where the composition originally ends. Okay, so if I were to drag it all the way out here, it would just slow everything down. If I were to drag it in, I'm saying, okay, cool, make that entire composition take place over X number of frames. Okay, but what we want to do after we've applied enable time remapping is we're going to delete the last key. Alrighty, and I'm going to select my first key, right click, toggle, hold, keyframe. Okay, so selecting the very first keyframe from our time remapping, right click, toggle, hold over here, right? Right click, toggle, hold, keyframe. Okay, cool. And this is now where I'm going to sort of just use these guides that I've made and start playing around with the mouth shapes. Okay, so let's see. We start off with an S. She says, Stay away from my baby. Stay away from my baby. All right, so we're going to start off with an S. And if we don't have the shapes that we feel are necessary, there we go. Um, then we can always try and just find ones that do work, right? That kind of fill the space. So if I went for stay, the mouth would be behind the teeth. So stay. Um, and then I'm kind of just going through. And as I said, finding the mouth shapes that best suit the, the sound that we're looking for. All right. So if I wanted to have like an A, maybe I'll use the R. Uh, and I can always go back and change this. All right. So we've got another R. Uh, I'm going to copy paste that keyframe and we'll see if it can work at the end. Uh, stay away. I'm going to copy and paste. You see it how like I've labeled them. So I've labeled it a Y to know that it's an A sound rather than a. Okay, so that's the same sound as this one. So I can just copy paste that keyframe. Uh, let's find F. Uh, I'm sure this is quite boring. I'll speed through the other ones, uh, but just so we can get a, a an idea there. Um, and then R from. I think maybe. That might work from M. Uh, we kind of want something with our where our lips are closed, so maybe from maybe F V. Stay away. So again, it's that A sound. Stay away from my baby. Okay, and we'll just go here and look for something that works for B. Okay, uh, I think B, 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 maybe the W will work. A, Y, I'm gonna copy and paste that. There's another B, so let's copy and paste that. And then we have like an E sound. So we'll go E, and then we're gonna bring her to rest at the end here. All right. So any sort of resting uh, pose. Uh, let's see which one would work best. I reckon FV would work best for uh, for resting. Okay. So now that we've done the initial plotting, let's play back and see how it's looking. Stay away from my baby. Stay away from my baby. Okay. So the stay away seems to be working fairly well. Stay away from my Stay away from my from my from 
And this, this is kind of where I need to go and add something here. So from um, that mouth shape is going to stay there. So from my, from my, let's bring in that last shape that we had here from my, um, and I'm kind of hoping that that's going to help us to transition into the next sort of like from my into that B sounds, right? So we can see how that then goes there. So let's shift that up a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's kind of just going through. All right. There's definitely something here that I'm not happy with. Bay. Uh, bay. That goes on for too long. So I'm going to shift that up over there, uh, simply by copy and pasting, and then I'm going to change that to maybe that one. Stay from my baby. Stay away from my baby. Stay away from my. Hmm. Not necessarily working out as much as I would like, but I can always go back and refine it as necessary, right? My baby. My bay. Let's go here. We can change that bay. Uh, don't want it the same there. All right, so I'm just, just going to sort of like, I've probably sort of sped through this already just to see um, like how it's going. But Stay away from my baby. we can always, as I've said, go back and adjust things as necessary. Um, I'm just trying to find something that would work for baby. Um, so maybe that one, let's see. Stay away from my baby. Nope. All right, so it's just messing around. All right, so I'm going to cut to where I have sort of finished this up for you, and then we'll take a look at how we can go about doing the face. Stay away from my baby. Stay away from my baby. Stay away from. Stay from my. Stay away from my baby. From my baby. From. From my baby. From my baby. All right, so let's call it there. I don't want this video to be too damn long. Uh, so let's say that we have now blocked this out excellently. Um, Stay away from my baby. There's a little bit going on at the end where we would need to sort of like neaten it up there. Uh, but also because of the sort of cadence of the voice, there's a lot of mouth shapes on top of each other. So we might actually also benefit from going and maybe removing a few of these. Um, but we'll only like, uh, I'm not gonna do that in this video. We'll sort of like only really do that when we're in the super refinement mode. Okay. so. Now, in the previous option, option three, our character ends looking to the left. All right, so I want my female character to start looking to the right. Okay, so I've got the stay away from my baby. Um, and what I'm going to do is we're going to have the face null. Let us turn that back on. I'm just going to turn my eyebrows back on so that we don't miss any of those. Eyebrow left, eyebrow right. I've separated those so we can animate them separately. Uh, but I'm just going to lock everything here except for my face null. And I am going to move my face across the screen. All right. 
And let's say that our character is maybe a little bit shorter. Let's put it there. Stay away from my baby. Okay, so I placed it there. Um, I'm just gonna move it back so that I can create its very first position keyframe. And uh, yeah, then we can mess around with it from there. So there we go. Create our very first keyframe. I'm gonna set that at the very beginning of the timeline. Um, and then I can just move this like so. Get it back into position. Okay, so stay. One, two, three. I'm just gonna count out some frames here. So one, two, three, four, five. Remember we can do this um, by holding down command and using the left and right arrow keys or the page up and page down keys for those of you with uh, Windows machines. Okay, um, not entirely sure why my face null isn't showing, but uh, let's just check. Ah, that's why my opacity is set to zero. Boom, bam, there we go. Uh, position, let's go. Okay, uh, so I'm going to have her move her head across and down. Okay, so let's see. Stay away from my baby. Stay away from my baby. Baby. Okay, so that movement's gonna be fairly simple. I don't think we need to do anything too intense for this character. So I'm gonna apply some easing there. Um, ah, I know why I'm not seeing anything, my bad. I'll save this and correct the file for you, but I do need to turn on toggle mask and shape path visibility. Okay, so currently our face is moving in a straight line. Okay, so to sell the idea of having a little bit of more natural movement, I'm gonna zoom in here and I am going to adjust that path. All right, so now my face is going to rotate first up and then down. All right, so now maybe that might be a little bit too much, but uh, yeah, maybe just a little too much, but still, it works. We'll make it happen. Stay away from my okay, maybe we've moved her a little bit too far down, so let's have her sort of looking there. Uh, and yeah, so that's just going to allow us to introduce some arcs. We would go and do that for like any swinging arms or earrings or anything like that. Stay away from my baby. Okay, uh, so that's our initial movement. I think we're just going to leave it there. Uh, let us edit the speed graph and let's have our head kind of like snap into place. Let's see if that's going to work for us. Stay away from my baby. Yeah. Stay away from my uh, alternatively, it could just be a constant speed. Stay away from my yeah, that's looking pretty Stay good. Away okay, so we've got the movement of the god null or the face null rather. I can lock that because I don't think I'm going to be doing anything with it um, at this point. And I'll show you once we've set this up how we can go about just hiding the eyeshadow so that it doesn't look as though it is um, sort of falling off like that. And I actually want to see as well what would happen if I apply a little bit of rotation. Uh, sort of, let's see here. So we can go out there and then let's rotate ever so slightly. I'm just gonna make it like five and a half degrees. Okay, um, I'll apply easing to that as well. I remember what the previous graph looked like, so I'm just gonna do something like that. Stay away from my, away from my Okay, I don't know if I actually dig the rotation, but uh, let's leave it on for now and we can, we can see how it goes. Okay, cool, so that's done there. Let's take a look at, again, the blinks for this. Okay, so we have got the pupil null, which is going to allow us to interact quite nicely with that. Uh, and then we've got our top blink and our bottom blink nulls. Okay, so they're sitting on top of each other. They're the same, um, they're the same position. So what that essentially means is I'm just going to create a position keyframe for both of them. And I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to move them up and down. All right, so typically when we start talking, we blink, right? And especially when our head moves, we blink. Um, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to want to, let's move this out by two frames. Reason being that our pupils also guide our eyes. Okay, so if I were to grab my pupil null, which is over here, I would create my very first keyframe at the start, and then one, two, three, I would bring it to here. Okay, so let's see. That's working, and then the blink, one, two. Let's do that, so we'll bring the bottom null up. And then we can bring the top null down. All right, so there's our overlap there. And we can take a look at that. 
stay away from my baby. Okay, so we can overlap that a little bit more over there. Let's apply a little bit of easing so long. Stay away from my... There, she blinks. And then one, two frames later, I can then just copy and paste the first set of keyframes so that we have a full blink. Stay away from my... Stay away from my... From my... my baby. Maybe we have another blink over here. So let's copy and paste that. Copy and paste this one over here as well. Um, and maybe, yeah, let's maybe just bring it. Let's make a duplicate as well. Uh, we can bring those closer together. And I can move them to just ahead of the other blinks. Let's see how that works. Stay away from my baby. Maybe bring that out a little bit more and shift it like that. Okay, so now we've got our blinks going down. Stay away from my baby. So I won't do anything more intense than that. Maybe I'll just drag this out a little bit more. My baby. Stay away from my baby. Okay, cool. Um, and then let's bring that so it sort of like ends with the final sentence. Stay away from my baby. So that she's staring at him the whole time. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is our eyebrows, right? That's really going to be where we express most of our emotion. So. I'm going to hide and lock these blink and pupil nulls. Alrighty. And then I'm going to adjust brow left and brow right. Okay. Now, the brows work slightly differently because they are uh, strokes that have been made inside of After Effects. All right. So when I am animating it, I am animating the position of that eyebrow. All right, the actual path of the eyebrow. So if I come back to the very start, I go down inside of my contents, right? So here's my brow right. Uh, when it opens up normally, it'll be sort of like contents transform. We're going to go into shape one and we're going to click on path. All right, so we'll be animating the path for that. And then, of course, it's going to be the same for our eyebrow left. I want to animate the path. Okay, and then I'll simply select these, hit U, and that is going to bring up their properties. Okay, so to interact with this, I am going to be using my pen tool. All right, pen tool allows me to interact with the individual points. All right, and as I move those points, it will then animate them. Okay, uh, what is that? Oh no, there we go. Okay, <laughs> uh, obviously recommend saving as you go. Okay, so as she says, stay away, she, I want to bring her eyebrows in. So I think maybe by like, by the A in stay, let's do that. Okay, so let's do a brow left. Uh, we are going to make our character angry. Um, so let me do this, pen tool. And we remember that our eyebrows go down like so. We can extend these paths here. And the reason why mine is looking so blurry is just because it's trying to sort of adapt the um, the animation, is adapt the information. Okay, so this is kind of maybe where I would save just in case. Um, remember that we can always dump our disk cache. So I'm actually going to save a duplicate just in case. Um, underscore two. And then we can go to our preferences. Right, so either Adobe After Effects preferences on a Mac, otherwise it'll be found under Edit, I think somewhere down here. All right, uh, preferences, media and disk cache, that's uh, over here, kind of like halfway. And um, I'm just going to empty that by clicking on empty disk cache. All right, so you see I'm going to dump close to about 44 gigs, and that should hopefully make life a little bit easier for my machine to help me show things. Okay, so there we go, we've got the first brow. All right, let's do the second one. Uh, so I'm essentially just going to do the exact same thing. So stay, we're going to make her nice and angry. Uh, let's bring that curve down a little bit more like so and like so. And there we go. So as she moves, her eyebrows are going to move with us. Pretty dope, right? Um, so let's apply some easing to that. We know that for the most part, we're sort of having everything start fast. And end. So that looks, there we go. 
That's looking pretty cool so far, right? So all of a sudden we've got like a fairly decent emotion going on. Cool. So now kind of what we want to do next is I just want to show you how we can work with this eyeshadow. All right, so we keep it sort of locked in place. And then I'm also going to show us how we can go about just getting rid of that overlap information there, um, which we can use masks and mats for. All right, so taking a look at the, um, we've, uh, we've actually got a brown null as well. Um, so that's that one over there. Uh, so maybe we should do something with the position and the rotation on that just to see how that works. So I'll select those. Let's apply easing so long. Uh, by the time we get here, if we rotate things a little bit, it gives us a little bit more of that offset. And yeah, I think maybe there. Okay. And then again, let's select those in the graph editor. Let's have them happen quite quickly. And there we go. All righty. So that's that. That's our eyebrows done. That's our face movement done. And that's our pupil movement done. Okay. So the next thing that I'm going to do here, as I said, is I'm going to show you the eyeshadow. All right. And the eyeshadow works the exact same way as it does um, for the eyebrows, right? We are going to be animating their path. So I'll relabel these for you. So that's going to be. Um, Oh, it's not letting me relabel it. Okay, never mind. Okay, so you'll see just taking a look at uh, one of these masks, right? So this I have set up in a way where we have these points that allow us to sort of adjust. And this is kind of the, the easiest thing I could think of in terms of the scope of the assignment. So let's take a look here. As that is moving, uh, I'm going to bring that sort of down here. Let's maybe bring that eyeshadow out a little bit more. And if I use my Convert Vertex tool, which is hiding under the pen tool, I can then interact with these paths separately, right? Which is exactly what we want. Uh, so I'm just going to drag that out there. I don't need to worry about anything else. Uh, and then I'll do the same here. So let me just quickly undo that. Um, grab my pen tool and move it into the initial correct position. Let's do something like that. And then again, just quickly grabbing our convert vertex tool, we can bring that out a little bit like so. Okay. And again, one more time using boom, boom, boom. Uh, let's grab our selection tool there and we'll do something like that. Okay. Um, so this is actually where I do need to get my timing correct uh, with my eyebrows. Okay. So I'm just going to undo what I've done there. Uh, let me grab my eyebrow layers here. Um, let's have that happen at the same speed. And then I'm just going to make sure that everything kind of matches. All right. So I just want to make sure that um, when I do blink, my eyeshadow is going to follow at the same rate. Okay, there we go. Stay away from Okay, uh, a little bit of an error at the very end here where my eyebrow is kind of moving off of that mascara. So a uh, fairly easy fix. All I need to do is grab my pen tool, um, quickly deselect it, grab that pen tool, move it like so. Yeah, something like that. Okay. Now, we obviously don't want her head to, or her face, the eyebrow and the overlap there to, to sort of show beyond the face. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly unshy everything. Um, you'll see that we've got a lot of mats and masks going on for the eyelids that are sort of happening there. Um, but the eyeshadow and the eyebrow do not have mats, which is pretty dope. Okay, so what I'm going to do is for this eyeshadow, uh, I am going to quickly just create a shape. So let's make like an ellipse. Um, this is going to make a shape layer. All right. Uh, I just want to adjust the stroke. Let's not have a stroke. Let's do that. Um, my fill option. Let me. Oh, no, man. Come on. It's making a mask, not a mat. Okay, making sure to deselect any of my layers. I don't want to accidentally create uh, anything that I don't need. 
grabbing this and let us just kind of like try and get the shape as accurate as possible. Okay, if I sort of had thought this far ahead, I would have just duplicated the face shape and brought that in as a dedicated mask. But there we go. Let's call this eyeshadow matte. Um, and we're going to drag this all the way down so it's sitting above the eyeshadow layer. Where's that one at? Um, just quickly shy things so I can find everything. Okay. Um, well, we've got the brows, so we, maybe we can just do the eyebrows for now. Um, let's eye right, eye left, brow left. Okay. Uh, so brow left, I'm going to set the mode to alpha matte. I'm going to duplicate our eyeshadow matte, put it over the other brow. I know it's called the eyeshadow matte, but it's essentially doing the exact same thing. So I could always relabel them. There we go. So there already, there is our eyebrow disappearing. All right. And what I can do is I can always go back to our mats if I were to solo them. And I could then just adjust that so that it's overlapping with the hair a little bit better. So I'll set that up for you guys when I give you the file, but just to let you know, that's how we would go about doing that. Uh, and then where is my eyeshadow? Did I accidentally delete it by any chance? Search um, shadow, eyeshadow matte. Is that really all I've got? Okay, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna undo, I'll cut to where I haven't accidentally fucked up and then we'll continue from there. Okay, yes, so I did mess up. I accidentally, when I created my, my mask shape, I drew it on the eyeshadow and when I deleted it, it deleted it. Okay, so this is actually, let's do something like this. So we're gonna do lips like so. And that should stop it from cutting into the hair for now. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll call this face matte. Maybe that will make life a lot easier. I'm going to set this to none so that I don't, um, so, yeah, so that I can separate it. I'm going to put it over the eyeshadow. I'm going to duplicate it and put it over my brow right, and I'll duplicate and put it over brow left. Okay, very important that what I do is come back in and make sure that because things are hiding, I haven't accidentally put these things um, sort of between anything that I don't want or need. Okay, so let's check brow left, brow right, and eyeshadow. I'm gonna set all of these to alpha matte, and there we go. It's only going to be visible. Let me lock these. Uh, it's only gonna be visible once we have that overlap there. Okay, cool, so we can kind of see it there. Uh, slight error going on, so let me grab, I think it's gonna be for the eyeshadow that would be easiest to do. Um, so we'll grab that eyeshadow mat. I'm going to turn it on and solo. And I'm just going to grab my pen tool and not do that. I want to uh, come on. Let me change you. Let me change you scale. Fine. Let's just unlink you, move you slightly further out and hide you. All right, so I'm gonna undo that, doesn't really matter. Okay, yeah, there we go. So now our face is kind of working, which is pretty dope. So, stay away from my baby. That's kind of working, I'm happy with that. Uh, my mouth shapes disappear over here. So I'm gonna end my timeline and I can trim comp to work area. Okay. Stay away from my baby. Cool. So that is our first option down, right? So I've shown you how we go about using the eyebrows, the eyelids, the pupil, and uh, I've generated some mats for you, which I will refine and give properly once, um, once we've got that. Okay. Um, all right. So then let's move on to our next character, our last character. We've got our little whiskey glass dude over here. Okay. So I'm actually pretty happy with how our uh, whiskey dude came out. What uh, I'll show you, I'll show you the cool thing at the very end. Okay, so again, done the exact same thing I've gone through. But mother, I love him. Okay, and obviously I haven't animated anything. Uh, I need to figure out why that eye is being a little bit strange. 
Um, but we'll get there. Okay, so there we go. So it's going to be like the left eye. See me. No. Highlights. I left. Okay, well, I'll figure it out at some point. I'm in like slow motion Sunday mode. Okay, so let's take a look. So I've planned it out. But mother, I love him. But mother, I love him. And uh, we're going to take a look at our mouth shapes. All right, so option one mouth shapes. Uh, I see that we, I've like duplicated those mouth shapes by accident. So I'm simply just going to delete one of them and we can do that. All right, so here I'm going to right click and again, I'm going to go to time, enable time remapping, and it's gonna do exactly what it did before, right? So I can extend that layer out. I can delete that one there. And let's see. What mother, I love him. Okay, so there we go. Um, I wanna see, can I select? Can I select any, can I select that eye maybe and, and figure out where it's coming from? Uh, I'll skip to where I fixed it. Okay, there we go. All right, cool. So it was sort of just doing like a, a scaling thing that I wasn't too happy with. Okay, so moving along swiftly, let's check it out. So again, I'm going to sort of like speed through this exact same process, finding all the options for our time remap, uh, applying toggle hold keyframe to all of our keys. Now, I guess I didn't really tell you why we would do that. So let me take us all the way to the very last mouth shape. Okay, now if I haven't put in um, toggle hold, it's gonna cycle through all of the mouth shapes until it gets to whatever it was that I selected. Okay, so toggle hold keyframe, there we go. Let's go in here and let's find our Bs and all that jazz. So I'll see you on the other side. But mother, I... But mother, I... mother I love him oh. all right I am back so scrubbing through this you can see that my uh, my mouth shapes for off uh, for uh, hitting tab and going through my mouth shapes are sort of like black here right so this is a fairly simple fi uh, fix remember which is pretty cool so I'm just going to make sure that I have the correct layer selected uh, okay cool so these are the 
guides below that. Okay, so very simple fix to get rid of these guides as well, which is pretty cool. Um, so for those of you who don't know, we can obviously set our, um, our color labels, right? However, the very first option is select color group. So anything that I've labeled this color, I can select, I can turn off and I can lock. All right, the rest of it, let me quickly show you about how we can go about um, opening uh, layers in Illustrator. So I'm just gonna get that popping open so long. Um, and I can then adjust this maybe with some like gray lips. I think that might work a little bit better um, just to help sell the idea of that. All right, so Illustrator is opening up. And if I wanna find this exact layer so that I can make sure to uh, open the right file, right clicking on it and going to reveal, right? I can reveal in Finder uh, and that's going to let me, uh, I don't wanna, sh I don't wanna rate you. I don't wanna rate you. There we go. Okay, so again, let me open those mouth shapes. And here we go. All right, so you can see I've given all of the lips a black stroke. So I am going to very quickly just run through and adjust that uh, so that we don't have that issue any further. Okay, so selecting that, let us make this kind of like a gray. Let's make it like a light gray. Okay, and then I'm going to just copy that information, boom. And going through my layers, right, you can see that we have grouped them. Okay, so I just need to go through each of them, select the outline and change the color. All right, so I'll see you on the other side. Okay, cool. So I have now done that. All of my lips have been turned to gray. And by simply overwriting the save, so Command or Control S, it'll overwrite there for me. And when I dive back into After Effects, boom, there we go. Okay, so let's take a look here. How is this looking for me? But mother, I love him. But okay, it's cool. So that's kind of looking fairly decent. So I can, I'm gonna lock that over there. Um, and here, I haven't made any eyebrows. I sort of just want this dead stare. Uh, I do have top eyelids. I do have bottom eyelids. So what we'll do is let's just use them kind of just to get used to using them. All right, so I'm gonna lock those. Uh, my face null, I'm going to go, uh, he's gonna be looking from the right. Um, and then he's gonna sort of like look forward. Okay, so I'm gonna place the face null there. Boom, position. Uh, let's bring him around to about there. All right, and I'll just introduce a small curvature to that path. Not too intense. But mother, I love him. Okay, we'll do F9 there. Let's dive in here again, making sure we're working with the speed graph. Uh, let us have a little bit of time to slow down and a little bit of time to speed up. 10 frames, maybe too much. I'm gonna bring that to eight frames. Let's see, 
what that looks like. But mother, I love. But mother, I love it. All right. On the head turn, we'll have a blink because we do tend to blink when um, turning our heads. Right, sort of like saves our eyes from that confusion. So as he's turning, I'm going to have my top eyelids come down. And I can kind of solve the idea of a blink if I leave a little sliver of that white there. Kind of like that. Right, pretty cool. Uh, and then I will copy and paste my very first keyframes. Um, one, two, three. Let's have that take place over three frames. All right, so three frames, one, two, three, one, two, three, dope. So, uh, oops, selecting all of those keyframes and applying easing. Let's see. But mother, I... But mother. Um, let's maybe do something like this and see how that looks. Okay. But mother, I love him. Uh, a little bit slow, but I kind of like the movement or the speed of it. So maybe we just make this two frames long. Uh, maybe maybe three frames to close the eyes, two frames. To but open. mother, I love him. But mother, I love him. There we but go. Mother, I love him. Cool. So nice and simple. Obviously, we can do a lot more with this character, but that's essentially all we really need to know about using it. Um, to give you guys a cool idea, I did try and make something fairly dope for you guys. So we have got uh, these liquor pieces here, right? So my, my layer 26 now is the whiskey itself, all right? But above that, I have got uh, some options here for liquid. And this liquid actually moves. But mother, I love him. But mother, I love Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, and we'll just sort of like let that play through. And you can see that we've got the liquid, but mother, I which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is with this liquid is I'm actually going to select both of these. I'm going to hit U. All right. Um, and what I want to do is I actually want to apply time remapping to these. I want to see if this is going to work. Um, no, it's not going to let me. Why? Let's do that. Time, okay, let's do time stretch. Uh, let's make that like 200% faster. And I wanna see here. All right, well, I'll mess around with it. Um, I did want to try and time remap, but I suppose I would have to pre-compose all of this. Um, Maybe that would work as well. So if I were to select these, command shift, let's get rid of that position key for now. Um, but mother, I okay, command shift C to pre-compose. We'll call this uh, liquor. I don't know how to spell liquor, so I'm gonna call it like that. Uh, let's go inside here. Okay, so here is our motion. So let's go back to option one. Um, we can always change the toggle. Let's make the modes like multiply. There we go. All right, so I just set the mode to multiply just so we can see that there. And if I enable time, time remapping, there we go. All right. Um, I'm just going to quickly make that unshy so we can see it here. All right. So for this head turn, the liquor would move a little bit faster, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go maybe out to here, create a keyframe, and I'm going to bring it back here. But mother, I love him. But or uh, let me sort of just quickly delete that. Let's bring that here. But mother, I love him. So for that turn, that's going to be where our liquid like really um, sort of like really adjusts itself. So I'm going to give myself maybe like 10 frames from the end of that timeline. I'm going to do that there. But mother, I love you. I just shift this. Time remapping can be fairly confusing to work with. I still get like quite confused sometimes. Uh, but what do I want to do? I want to just try and make it so the liquor moves a little bit faster. Okay, so let's do that. Maybe we try and get in touch there. 
Let's see if that's gonna work. But mother, I love him. But mo but mother, I love him. But mother, I love <clears throat> Let's just let that preview quickly. But mother, I love him. But mother, I nah, I'm not happy with that. All right, I guess we can kind of just leave it flowing for now. Um, I'll mess around with it. I'll play around with it and I'll let you guys know <coughs> how we can go about using it. Okay, but those are our three, uh, those are our three pieces, okay? So what I want to do now is uh, I kind of want to put these all together, all right? Kind of just to have that interaction between all of them. Okay, so I'm going to hit Command or um, Control N. It's going to bring up a new composition. And I'm going to call this uh, Root Comp. So I tend to just call this Root Comp um, just because I know that this is where it all begins. Okay, uh, let me change this for us. Well, before I forget, 25. Let's make this maybe 10 seconds long just in case. And we can say, okay. All right, so now we've got this here. Uh, I'm going to put this in my composition layers there. And I'm going to come into my comps here and select options one, two, and three. We'll put them here. Okay, so now all we need to do is just rearrange these so that we know where everything is. Uh, I'm going to color code these um, so I don't get confused. And taking a look over here, let me, I can actually move these out. Okay, so what's cool about this now is I could either go and drag these out or I can right click, I can go to keyframe assistant and I can say sequence layers. All right, so I've right clicked on those selected layers. I've gone to keyframe assistant, sequence layers. I don't want any overlap, so I'm just gonna say okay. And there, it's spread it out for me. Uh, <laughs> I've just done it the wrong way around. All right, so let me just quickly tag that around like that. Select them again, right click, keyframe assistant, sequence layers, okay. Okay, so there we go. So now if I play this back. But mother, I love him. Love him. <laughs> there we go. And that's how we can have sort of like multiple scenes. And then I can just right click, trim comp to work area, and there we go. Mother, I love him. All right, so we can see that the mouth shapes for our character here are still visible. So if I hit tab, right, just to show you again, I'm in my root comp. I can either go to options three, two, or one. So I'll go to option two, uh, option two. And there's something I could do here. I could either select my mouth shapes over here. All right, and um, it's that's got a mask on it. Okay, uh, over here. So I can either then adjust the mask path or alternatively, uh, I'm just gonna go in. I'm going to find myself the, was it this one over here? Uh, let me just turn off transparency so I can actually see what I'm doing. Um, uh, so let's go here. There we go. Okay, so all my cyan options, I'm gonna select uh, level group group, not group, hide and lock them. And now my character will not have those letters visible. Okay, so going to my root composition, let's take a look at this one more time. There we go. All right, and that's it. That's working with these options over here. So you can choose whichever one you want. If you wanna have multiple interactions between the two, that's also fine. If you've got like multiple lines, um, don't feel obligated to use any one of these. You can choose whichever one you want, regardless of like your particular gender and your perceived gender of the character. Uh, and we'll take it from there. Okay, so I hope this has been useful. I'm sure it's been quite a long one. Yeah, close to an hour, but um, yeah, I hope that you've found this useful. So yeah, I'll see you guys in class. Good luck with it. Stay well and uh, I'll check you around. Ciao.